Hey guys, Monochrom here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Genuinely good to have you. Today we're taking a look at the Cold Steel Pocket Bushman. If this was made by any other company, this would be classified as a folding monster. But since it's made by Cold Steel, it's actually not too bad compared to its sibling. So let's take a look at it. Here it is. Now, these stainless steel handles, as you can see, this is basically one folded over piece of stainless steel. Yep, folded over to create the knife handle. Now this right here looks like a traditional rear mounted top lock or rocker lock. Uh, no, no. You do have a nice bit of cordage, nice short lanyard that comes with the knife. And actually this is very important, oh yes. You'll see why in a little while. As for options, you can carry a tip up right or left hand side, and that clip looks absolutely minuscule compared to the rest of the knife. Yep. Wow, that, that looks so tiny and adorable. But okay. <laughs> Moving on. You do have this bulge on both sides, and that really does help with grip, but unfortunately, in the open position, that gap is so wide that behind the finger cutout to right about here, yeah, that's, that's definitely a bit of a hot spot. Maybe more than a bit if you're really bearing down on this knife. Now, as I said, if this was made by any other company, this would be a folding monster. But it's made by cold steel. You could use the thumb stud, but I've owned this knife for several months, and uh, yeah... I don't want to break my thumb trying to thumb this thing open. So even though you do get a thumb stud that, as you can see, clearly favors right-handed users because there's barely a nub on this side. So even though it's technically dual thumb studs, it's really one side only. Although since this is slotted, you should be able to reverse it if you're left-handed. And this knife actually is ambidextrous. Absolutely. You'll have to reverse the thumb stud and reverse the clip or maybe carry it without the clip. Because even with that bulge in the middle, this is a surprisingly thin knife, but heavy. This is not titanium. This is stainless steel, so this is heavy. And as usual, guys, specs in the description box below. Be sure to check that out when the video is over. Let's take a look at the blade. And again, no, I'm not going to try to thumb this thing open. There we go. Nice solid snap. And yeah, even if we don't count the um, short lanyard, this thing is, well, it's basically a mini folding buoy. And yes, that is the proper way to pronounce the man's name, buoy, not Bowie. Although, considering the fact that the man was an alcoholic, a womanizer, and a slave trader. That's right, a slave trader. 
um, maybe you want to disrespect his name by pronouncing it improperly. The weird thing is, when the man died and newspapers started interviewing people who knew him, they all said the same thing. The guy was incredibly charming to the point that most people said they hated the things he did, but they loved the man himself. That's how charming he was. In modern days, we'd say he had Jim Jones levels of charm. Thankfully, he didn't try to create a cult. But yeah, there you go. Nice little short history lesson on the man. Was he impressive? Yes, but gotta take the negative with the good. But yeah, the best way to describe this pocket bushman Mm -hmm. A mini folding buoy, and it is impressive. That's a stone washed blade, and it is four and a half inches long. Now, you might be able to see a very slight gap right there, very front of the handle and rear of the blade tang. Don't let that worry you. Like I said, this looks like a variation on a traditional rocker lock. It's not. If this were, and you saw that bit of gap right there, yeah, I'd say don't buy it. And I'm sure some of you have figured out Yes, African Bushman. This knife was around back when Lynn Thompson owned Cold Steel. And Lynn enjoyed going to Africa, apparently multiple visits. He does have a fixed blade Bushman, and this is the folding version or pocket Bushman. And, um, yeah, some of the um, people he associated with in Africa, well, I still remember in the early to mid-1990s, one of Cold Steel's catalogs, Lynn highlighted what happened to a couple of the men he knew in Africa. Um, yeah, apparently Lynn made friends with a very dangerous man who was known as a man killer. He wasn't a hired assassin or anything like that, but he was known as a man killer and so was his son. Well, one day someone took out his son by poisoning him. And they were very much concerned that the um, middle-aged father, although he was middle-aged, proud black African man, would come after them. So the gutless cowards poisoned his beer. Mm -hmm. So they poisoned his son, most likely his beer as well, and then they did the same thing to his dad because they were afraid of him. And Lynn admitted, yes, these two men are man killers, but I got along great with them. It's actually in one of the catalogs. It was a two-page memorial to these very dangerous men. But okay, getting back to the knife, in the open position you can see how wide this opening is here. And when you're bearing down on it, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's a hot spot. The clip itself is a little bit of a hot spot, but that's nothing compared to this area right here. Yeah. I mean, it is rounded a little bit on the sides, 
but still, only a little bit. And when you're bearing down on this thing hard, wow, that is painful. Yeah, the more you bear down on it, the worse that hot spot area becomes. I mean, it's nice that the metal handle is flared out a bit, and that does help with grip. But wow, that opening down there, mm -mm. yeah, that is a really bad hot spot. This knife isn't too expensive, mostly because of the blade steel. It's 4116 stainless. So yeah, you are getting a budget steel. And honestly, this is not an EDC knife. I mean, it's not. Uh, you're not going to want to EDC this, unless maybe you're in the African bush. I don't know. Personally, I've never been there. But yeah, this is not an EDC knife, and the lock mechanism is why this thing is mostly for the collection. Can you use it in a survival setting? Well, yes, because even though the handle is flared here and on the opposite side, this knife is rather thin. It is heavy, but it's still rather thin. And one thing I found out is that when you're building a bug out bag or a survival bag, survival kit, especially one that centers around a backpack, you're better off with items that are thin but long instead of items which are short and thick. Thin and long, ironically, takes up a lot less space. So you could use this in a survival bag. You could use this in a bug out bag. And yeah, this is one intimidating looking mini folding buoy. Now keep in mind, my definition of that type of knife is one that has, well, Fixed blade, flat grind, just like this one is, and nine and a half inch blade, minimum. So yeah, that's why I'm calling this a mini, because that blade is only four and a half inches. Again, standard of comparison, guys. But... The thing that makes it a little bit difficult for me to recommend this knife for actual use instead of just putting it in the collection is the lock mechanism. Because when I first got this, I opened it up and I was like, wow, this is impressive. And then I was like, uh, wait a minute, how do I unlock this thing and close it? I literally had no clue the very first time I opened it. So I decided to check the box, which is quite lovely for gift giving. And inside the box, unlike any other cold steel folding knife I have ever purchased, and keep in mind, I own a lot of cold steel including almost every single folding cold steel monster. And none of them came with the following. But this one did. It came with this. And this is an instructional pamphlet on exactly how to open and close your pocket Bushman safely because yes the lock mechanism is that obscure that unique like i said earlier in the video this short length of lanyard is actually important you do not want to cut this off but if you do make sure you replace it with 550 cord that is at least 
just as good as what you get from cold steel. Because here's how it works. In the open position, and this blade is rock solid. No up and down play, no side to side play. It's as solid as a fixed blade knife, at least on my example. Your mileage may vary, but this is something that won't vary. Here's how the lock mechanism works. You don't push down on here. It's not a traditional rocker lock. What you do is grip the lanyard and pull. Yep. And of course, it does not want to work on camera. Hold on. There we go. Okay. You grip the lanyard and you pull. And there is a ton of spring tension. And you have to hold it back because that unlocks the blade and then you can fold it. Unfortunately, I can't do this on camera. <laughs> nope. Because I got to be careful of the camera. But yeah, there's a tiny groove right there with a tiny stud. And when you let go, well, I thought that was supposed to move forward. Okay, never mind. But yeah. Once again, it's in the locked position. If you want to unlock this knife so you can fold the blade shut, get a good strong grip on that freaking lanyard and pull back. There we go. And in this position, the blade unlocks and you can fold it down. In that position, it's locked again. And I'm not even going to try to do this on camera. I do not want to cut my fingers. Hold on a sec, guys. Okay. I got the blade partially closed. Now this... When you start to fold the knife closed, this will stay back, as you can see here. So you have to pull and hold it and get the blade started closing, and then you can let go of the lanyard. But we're going to close it, and as soon as it closes, this will move forward just a bit. Let's see if I can show that to you. There we go. It moved forward just a bit, and now it's in the closed position. Now, it doesn't lock in the closed position. That's something you have to keep in mind. So when you're opening this, again, you will see the lock mechanism move. Let me see if I can show that to you. There we go. It moves ever so slightly. And again, when you're closing it, it moves ever so slightly back forward. Now, I've looked into this lock mechanism. I don't know how strong it is. That's the thing that worries me. When it comes to something like a traditional rocker lock, if you have a cutaway view, you can see how it works. When it comes to something like a button lock, again, you can see how it works. Liner lock, of course, and the absolute strongest lock mechanism I've ever encountered, a nice, thick frame lock. You got that big, beefy bar that just slides to the side and locks that blade tang in place and physically prevents it from shutting. Very impressive. I've looked into this one. 
And I'm not going to lie. I have... Well, I basically have no clue exactly how strong it is because it's such a unique lock mechanism. It's very obscure, so I can't tell you, well, it's just as strong as this lock, or it's almost as strong as this one, or not quite as strong as this one. No, I know it locks open, I know it's rock solid, but I don't know how much abuse this thing can take, which is another reason why for me, it's mostly for the collection. Not something I would carry, not something I would use, but I thought you guys would want to have a, a look at it. Like I said, in the time I've had it and used it, that lock mechanism is rock solid. I don't know how long it will hold up, though, or how strong it is. Just being honest. Please keep that in mind. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys soon. Please continue to stay safe out there.